Good day to you all. My name is Isheone Sunemera, a technical advisor at Five at Animal Health. So today I'm going to take you through cattle pen fattening as a key uh, uh, profit driver in beef production. So when one is doing uh, cattle farming or beef keeping, pen fattening lies at the end of the production cycle. So cattle pen fattening is a practice where we pen our animals in a confinement. We feed them with a high protein and energy diet to improve the degree of finishing when you slaughter your animal. So this practice is the profit making practice for every farmer who is doing beef cattle. However, for one to start cattle pen fattening, it doesn't uh, want one to be a cattle farmer. You can do cattle pen fattening by buying in animals and fatten them uh, to send for slaughter. Or when you are doing your cattle uh, farming, you can just get your uh, animals out of your breeding head, your steers or your cow animals, you pen them, you feed them with a high protein and energy diet and finish them off for slaughter. So in Zimbabwe, we have got different breeds of cattle, which comprise of Mashona, our original breed, Ngone, we have Tuli, Simental, Beef Master, Boran, Brahman, and even the Drought Master. So with these different breeds of cattle in Zimbabwe, the crosses of these different breeds often performs better in feedlot than the original breeds. With this in mind, when one is choosing cattle for, uh, for pen fattening, you have to consider the actual cattle, the actual cattle breed, and also the age and the uh, stage of that animal. By stage, I mean, is it a cow? Is it a steer? Is it a bull? Or is a, is a cow cow? So all these factors are considered when you are choosing animals to put in the pen. So more often, farmers will look for steers, which is a castrated male animal. And when it's young, you probably get to a super beef when, when it's well fed. So a lot of people will be looking for animals for that purpose. However, you can as well get your animals into commercial by buying older animals, old cows, and then you feed them well to, a, to get a commercial. The choice of animal when buying in cattle may cost you money if you are not careful. You may either buy an animal which is at a high price, but then you won't get the returns out of that animal. Or to buy a very young animal, thinking that it's going to gain uh, so much weight, then you won't get that in return. So you need to be very careful when you are selecting animals to put in, uh, in a feedlot. With that in mind, one has to be aware of how to age your animal. If you want to get your, your, your super grade uh, beef, you have to consider buying a young growing animal and most preferably a steer. Why? Because a steer uh, will get into super easily. However, this steer, you should consider what we call tooth count. You have to be able to age your animal using tooth. Because for every pair of tooth, it will represent a year to a year and a half in the growth cycle of an animal. So for a super, for an animal to be in super, it has to be six tooth and below. So that is another consideration when you want to get into super. However, for you to be more profitable and for you to be profitable in this business, you can even make profit out of getting your animals into commercial. You can fatten your old cows to get into commercial. So the next thing that you have to look at when considering your cattle pen fattening site is the location. So the location of the pen fattening site should have access, good road network, and have access to the market, have access to feed sources, and also it must have enough water. And on top of that, your cattle crawls should be sited in an area away from houses where there's no flooding. We have to ensure that your site will minimize flooding as much as possible. Rainy water must run off quickly, which means it has to be on a sloppy area. Then, when you are building the actual cattle crow, we have to consider the carrying capacity where the cattle crow will accommodate a certain number of animals. As a rule of thumb, it has to be 10 square meters per animal. So when you are building a cattle crow, you have to consider 10 square meters per animal. That is the correct 
carrying capacity of a cattle crow. Why 10 square meters? We have to give our animal enough space to walk around. We have to give our animals space to lie down, to feed, to have water. So that 10 square meter allowance will allow your animal to have that enough space. Also, overstocking of a cattle crow will cause too much mud. And when your animals are walking in mud, it will affect their weight gains because they use a lot of energy to walk through the mud. It will also affect your profitability of the business. Then, your feeding troughs. You have to ensure that at the edge of the cattle crow, that's where you construct your feeding trough. And this feeding trough must allow your animals to access feed freely. Also consider that one animal will need 50 to 70 centimeters feeding trough space for them to get enough feed every day. So this, with this in mind, it will help you as a farmer to achieve a uniform growth throughout the 90 days of a cattle pen fattening. Then we want to talk about water. Water is an essential nutrient in cattle pen fattening. So make sure that your water troughs are suited or located where it's easy to access water 24 seven. Your animals must get clean, fresh water all the time. So the equipment must allow you to do so. Many people in Zimbabwe who are doing cattle feedlot are using the bow valve a type of water system, which will allow your animals to have fresh water all the time without you actually adding the water with a bucket. With that system, we will ensure that your animals will get enough water uh, every day. Considering the fact that feed constitutes up to 70% of your cattle pen fattening business, it is essential to, to ensure that you get proper raw materials, high quality raw materials when you are making your own feed on farm. So there are two options of feeding a cattle. You can use commercial feed where you buy cattle pen fattening complete feed or you can mix your own feed on farm where you get raw materials or farmed crops to blend in with concentrates and premixes to make your own feed. I'll start with blending feed on farm. When you are mixing your own feed on farm, the reason, the main reason for doing that is to ensure that your production cost is low for you to make more profit. However, you must be careful when you are choosing the raw materials that you are going to mix on farm. When you are buying in raw materials, you have to ensure that you supply your animals with, the, with all the nutrients that they require for them to grow. By so doing, you have to make sure that you find adequate protein sources to feed your cattle. By adequate protein sources, you can buy in a 5-head beef high pro 60 concentrate or a 5-head beef high pro 80 concentrate or your cotton cake, your sunflower oil cake, your soya oil cake and masses. Those are the sources of protein which you can use when you are doing cattle pen fattening. Then we, now we look at the energy sources. It is essential that you get enough energy sources for your animals as the energy is the driver of fattening your animals. So with that in mind, you have to consider your maize and the maize byproducts. The maize byproducts are maize jam and maize bran. You also can consider the grains that give you starch like your barley, your sorghum and the likes. In that manner, you are guaranteed that your animals are getting enough energy for fattening. Then now you look at the roughage. The roughage you can make use of uh, mashanga or maize tova, grind it into fines to blend well with all the other raw materials. Also, grass hay. You can cut grass hay or hay from your uh, improved grasses, the likes of katambora hay, the likes of lucerne hay. You can use a lot of uh, plant uh, material to give your animals quality hay. Then, the vitamins and minerals. You can consider using the 5 8 pen fattening base mix, which is a complete pack with all your minerals, your vitamins, your amino acids, your rumen buffers, and essential salts for cattle in the uh, feedlot. So when you are blending these raw materials, you have to ensure that you mix according to the specifications of a nutritionist who will be guiding you. So it is essential to get guidance for, from a ruminant nutritionist 
for you to make sure that your animals will get enough nutrients for growth. After you have mixed your feed on farm, it has to come out like a TMR, a total mixed duration. So on a total mixed duration, when your animal takes a bite of this feed, it must get all the essential nutrients from the feed. But if you don't blend it well, one of the animals will be feeding on maize bran and another on cotton cake, on another on a base mix. In that way, it means your feed is not mixed well. Your animals will not gain weight well. But for your animals to gain weight very well and for your animals to get enough nutrients at any given point in the feeding trough, you have to make sure that you blend them very well and they mix very well to avoid other problems which may come with undermixed feed. Okay, finally, we're going to talk about the best practices when you are uh, starting a cattle feedlot. Firstly, you have to ensure that you induct your animals correctly when they are getting in a cattle uh, pen fattening. How? Induction, you have to induct your animals to the feed. You have to induct your animals in good health. So when you get your animals from grazing or from another farm, you have to ensure that you deworm your animal so that you get rid of the worms which will be in the intestines which will affect your average daily gain. Then secondly, you have to make sure that you dip your animals. Considering the fact that they were grazing out there, they may carry some ticks into your feedlot. So you have to make sure that your animals are clean before you start feeding them. Then thirdly, you have to um, block treat your animals. If they are coming from a high risk area of diseases, you have to ensure that you block treat your animals with ox tetracyclines to ensure that they are in good health uh, as they get into feedlot. So on the first day of arrival, you have to weigh your animals as they are coming in. You deworm, you dip them, you inject an antibiotic. Right, then after that, you give them five days. Then you vaccinate them against lumpy skin, you vaccinate them against black leg, botulism, and anthrax. So those diseases are diseases of economic importance as they may affect your average daily gain, as they may affect your animals while they are in feedlot. So after you've done that to your animals, you have to introduce them now slowly to a high protein and high energy diet that is keto pen fattening feed. So for you to do the correct induction procedure, you have to introduce your feed gradually. What do you mean gradually? You have to start by feeding one kg of keto pen fattening per day, then you do a step up feeding program where you additionally add a kg every day until you reach the maximum feed intake. But during that step up period, you must provide a hay ad lib so that your animals will adjust from grazing a dry hay out there to the high dense feed that we'll be giving in the, in the feedlot. Then how do you check if that is done correctly? That's where you conduct your dung scoring. A dung is an indication of what's going on in the, in the rumen. So what you need to do now is there's that dung, which would be like a cement type of a color. Like when you put cement, when you mix cement with water, that grayish color, it's a sign of acidosis. You should try and avoid that type of dung. Then the dung, which is very, very firm and hard, it shows that your animals is probably eating roughage only and is not eating the concentrate. We always want our dung to be uh, on the medium side, not too loose, but not too hard. So that's another way of checking if your animals have adapted very well. What are the challenges of poor adaptation? When you don't adapt your animals very well to feedlot, you get liver abscesses at the end of pen fattening. So at the abattoir, you may notice that your, the liver from your uh, pen fattening animals will come up with liver abscesses and will get condemned at the abattoir. That may affect the grade of your uh, uh, quality of meat, right? So for you to avoid that, you have to ensure that your feed troughs have got feed at any given time. You have to make sure that your feed troughs doesn't run dry. Because the moment they run dry, the pH in the rumen of your animals will fluctuate. That fluctuation of rumen pH will cause subacute rumen acidosis, and then at the end of it, it will cause liver abscesses. So many times farmers will complain about liver abscesses, and in Zimbabwe, there's a record that up to 30% of the cattle being slaughtered uh, in abattoirs, they have got that liver abscess. So for us to avoid that as farmers, 
we have to ensure that once we have adapted our animals to a, a, to a high dense pen fattening feed, we ensure that the feed trough has got feed all the time. Then on top of that, water is a critical nutrient when it comes to feedlot. You have to make sure that your animals will have access to water 24-7 without limitation. Thank you all for listening to this cattle pen fattening video. I hope this will help you in starting and executing your pen fattening business.